Hey everyone, welcome to today's webinar on the top QuickBooks Online's trends for 2022. Uh, we're so excited to have you all with us and our panelists have awesome tips prepared um, that we can't wait to share with you. Um, so we are going to jump into things in just a few minutes, um, but while we wait, I did wanna go over some housekeeping stuff. So first and foremost, uh, the webinar will be recorded and everyone who signed up today will be getting a copy in their inbox tomorrow. Uh, we'll also send out the slide deck just in case there's some, uh, you know, tips you want to reference in the PDF or something like that. Um, you'll receive those as well. So stay tuned for that. And of course, as always, you're welcome to forward those to anyone else you think might find the webinar useful. Um, beyond that, uh, you will see somewhere on your screen a questions tab. Um, as part of the GoToWebinar panel. And you can feel free to send us any questions throughout the webinar. We will have a formal Q&A at the end. Uh, but if there's anything you're really itching to ask, we'll do our best to uh, get to it live. And apologies if we don't get to your question, we'll do our best to follow up via email. Um, but there are a lot of you on the call today, which is great. Um, but yeah, so just feel free to send in those questions. In the meantime, I'd love to hear a little bit about your audience from our audience today, sorry, um, where you guys are joining from, what you're excited to learn, et cetera, et cetera. Um, then I'll do some intros. And again, if any of you guys are hanging around for the CPE credit, we are giving those out. To um, earn it, you will just need to participate in the four polls that we do have prepared today. They'll be kind of sprinkled um, in the webinar throughout our questions. Um, so yeah, so we'll get started in just a few minutes. Um, but looks like we've got some uh, people joining us from Philadelphia. Welcome. That's great to see Louisiana, Columbia, South Carolina, Texas. Um, cool way sports in Canada. Nice. Welcome. Uh, we've also got some Canadians on the line, myself and Camille. Uh, we're calling in from Toronto. Obviously a very snowy, cold day in Toronto. Um, Kelly's joining from New York, uh, which I also heard it was quite cold uh, there. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. So it looks like a lot of people have joined. We've got some people from Michigan, Baltimore, another Philly, Knoxville, uh, Fort Myers, Florida. Kind of jealous of that. <laughs> Would love to have some heat, um, but hopefully soon. Um, great. So we're going to get started then with some intros to start. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Elish McCann and I lead SEO and content marketing at Method. Uh, if you've never heard of Method before, we are the number one QuickBooks CRM. Uh, so definitely have our pulse on, you know, the latest trends and challenges in the QuickBooks space. Um, so with that, I'll move on to Camille, who is a product manager here at Method. Uh, Camille, do you want to share a little bit about yourself with the audience? I would love to. Um, nice to meet you guys. My name is Camille. Um, I'm working as a growth product manager at Method. I've been with Method for coming up on three years really quickly. Um, it's been a really great time so far. And uh, I started in professional services. So I was kind of uh, working in developing custom solutions for Method. And now I'm working just on the product team. Super exciting. Excited to be here and excited to chat. And I think this is also Camille's first webinar. Um, so we're definitely um, excited to see how he does. We did a dry run yesterday and he had some awesome tips. So you guys are in for a treat. All right. And <laughs> next we have Kelly, um, who is the founder of Totally Booked, as well as a co-founder at Totally SEO, which is a really cool uh, SEO, SEO sorry, firm for accountants. Um, Kelly, I'll pass it over. Awesome. Hi, guys. Um, so I am Kelly Gonzalez, the founder of Totally Booked, which is a bookkeeping firm here in New York City. Um, and as Ailish mentioned, I am also the co-founder of Totally SEO. Uh, we do uh, SEO, so search engine optimization, digital marketing for accountants and bookkeepers and accounting apps. Um, and then I actually, and I'll put a link probably in the chat or something, but I actually also just started an Etsy shop with another bookkeeper. Um, Kristen Zeraldo, and we're doing merch for accountants and bookkeepers. So like some busy season stuff, tax season stuff, just, you know, some fun accountant focused merch. So yeah, that's me. Oh, and I've been in business about six years now. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I was on mute there. Uh, Kelly is also a really well-known uh, pro advisor for you that, uh, for those of you that don't know, she's been on um, Insightful Accountants Top 100 and Top 10 list before. Um, so she's definitely got a lot of credibility in the cookbook space. And she's really bad at talking about herself. So I tend to forget those things. Yes, I have been a top 10 pro advisor, I'm a top 100 pro advisor. Um, and I'm part of the uh, trainer writer network for Intuit. So I would say that I just know QuickBooks really well and I get to teach it to other people and I enjoy it. 
Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly. Um, and while we have heard, you know, from our panelists and from some of you about where you're joining, uh, we do have our first poll um, prepared for you guys. Um, again, if you're getting the CPE credit, make sure to respond. We'll leave them open for about a minute, um, just so you have enough time uh, to kind of read the question as well as the answer. So we are just going to launch that. Um, sweet. Thanks so much to everyone who voted. Um, now we are going to jump into our first question, which is kind of related to the poll all of you guys just completed. So Kelly and Camille, I was wondering what trends and challenges are you guys anticipating for this current year? Uh, Camille, do you want to start us off? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so, I mean, I think one of the biggest things that we're, you know, we're seeing is a really, really big rise in like technological solutions. I think a lot of people are turning to software to find, you know, really, really great solutions to, you know, in, in tying in with the poll, increasing efficiency, right? I think a lot of people are looking to um, or seeing the fact that, you know, there are really easy ways to get really well organized and really efficient what you're doing in these technological solutions and um, particularly automation. So I think that's something that will, a, a recurring theme that we'll talk about um, is being able to get your systems automated and as efficient as possible is I think one of the biggest trends that I'm anticipating in 2022. And I, I think we've been kind of seeing on the rise in the last few years. Yeah. Um, I'd say that I think, especially because of the way we've kind of transitioned over the last couple of years, a lot of times, or at least when I first started, we were talking about how, uh, you know, technology is going to replace accountants, technology is going to replace bookkeepers, it's going to be a matter of, you know, building those relationships with your clients. And I think we're now more in moving into a phase where it's more um, accepted maybe by the accountants and bookkeepers. So I know that a lot of times I'm doing consults on how to, you know, install different apps or what apps you might need for your practice or what, you know, what that would look like if everything was connected and working and kind of doing all those things. Um, and then, you know, trying to build then a stronger relationship with the client and making sure that they have a way to communicate with us and reach out and, you know, give us any feedback, questions, notices that they've received, et cetera. Um, but I feel like, and I feel like it's already started to happen. I think the pandemic kind of pushed us forward a little bit with forcing us to work from home and having to go remote a lot faster than some of us had planned. Um, I think that also kind of motivated this shift where now, okay, we're in it, we're using technology, we're automating things. What can we now do to, I guess, improve that client experience? What can we do to keep people engaged, kind of ease their burden because they also like my clients, also had to go remote and move all of their employees and make changes and, and hire new people and so on. So I think it's more the acceptance of the technology at this point and the automation. I think too, with talent being kind of a challenge, technology is a great way to take, you know, really redundant tasks that people don't enjoy doing off their plate so they can focus on things that are more strategic and interesting. And that's just going to help you in the long run in terms of efficiency, which I know a lot of you guys want to improve, as well as like employee retention, which at the end of the day is really important as well. Um, yeah. So that's yeah, thanks guys for sharing. I know cybersecurity is unfortunately a big one as well this year. Uh, there's been a lot more kind of phishing scams going out there. I'm sure you guys get all those calls from random phone numbers saying we need your social security number. Um, so yeah, definitely unfortunate, but we are going to go into some tips on how to, you know, just keep your data safe, especially QuickBooks Online data. Um, so before we do jump into those tips, we do have our second poll prepared for all of you. Um, so thanks so much for everyone who voted, and we are going to jump into those tips. Um, so on that note, Kelly, Camille, anyone want to start us off? Um, so with this particular, how do you recommend QuickBooks Online users keep their data safe? <laughs> um, I can jump into that. So I will say that QuickBooks Online, and I've had to explain this to a lot of clients, um, especially with so many people moving from desktop to online in the last two years, uh, QuickBooks Online has the same... Uh, security level, and I don't know how to say this in a sophisticated way, but it's the same security level as your online banking. So there's encryption there, there's you know um, two-factor authentication, there's a lot of things in place to help make sure that the data is safe. Um, another thing that I tell clients is that you're typically not storing something inside of QuickBooks that is going to be um, too dangerous, right? So yes, you're connecting to your bank, secure connection. Yes, it's pulling in your transactions, but you're debit card number, your credit card number, those things should never really be inside of QuickBooks anyway. 
And so even when I, you know, speak to a prospect and they're like, oh, I'm going to give you access. I'm like, listen, there's very little that I can do by just having access to your QuickBooks. Not to say, you know, make it the easy password and turn off the, the double uh, check-in and the two-factor authentication thing. Absolutely keep those in place. But realistically, you shouldn't have anything in there that's so dangerous that it would be, you know, um, leaving you kind of open to this attack. Uh, the other thing is the way to keep everything safe is to also do it outside of QuickBooks, right? So like I use um, Lithio to communicate with my clients, to exchange documents, um, and again, encrypted, secure um, connection there. Uh, I store files outside. So files are in Lithio. Uh, prior to that, I use something called ShareFile also an encrypted environment. Um, but basically, it's it's a matter of making sure, I think, that your passwords are up to date and not super easy, you know, like not your dog's name or your birthday or your address, maybe trying to keep those uh, a little more complicated using different symbols and numbers, um, using something where, like I said, that file exchange where it's a secure environment to exchange anything that is sensitive, um, turning on two-factor two authentication, I have it for everything, even my Instagram account. I have to put in a code, I have to make sure that it's me, um, just doing the little things to avoid fraud, uh, just like that, um, because QuickBooks does a lot of the work for you. I have to give them credit on that, right? Like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a safe environment, thankfully, I don't want to jinx anything, but <laughs> it's a safe environment uh, that they've created, and they do stress that in their trainings and everything else, so I would say making sure that you're not keeping anything too sensitive in there, that you have the right place to store the things that you need. Um, and then also making sure that the right people have access. So my employees can only see what I give them access to. So specific client um, company files, not my own you know, um, company information. There's not a lot that they can do inside of Totally Booked, but they have access to the clients that I need them to have access to, and then not anyone else, right? So I'm also making sure that um, there's nobody interacting in there that shouldn't be. There's nobody that has access to see anything that they shouldn't see. Uh, keeping all of those things up to date, um, you know, going in two months after you let an employee go and realizing that they still had access that entire time is a little scary. So creating that offboarding off process, making sure that you're removing that access, that's also a pretty big one. Yeah, I you think that's cool. I think, I, no, 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 I 100% I agree with everything you said. And then to riff off of a few of the things that you're saying in terms of like password protection, I think where people become a little bit hesitant in terms of having those like, you know, slightly complex passwords and making sure they're different between um, systems is, you know, remembering all of that stuff. And realistically, you know, then you end up writing it down somewhere so you can remember it, but that's also super unsafe. And so what I've been kind of talking to a lot of people about are these password managers. So personally, I use the Google password manager. People are using OnePass, LastPass, lots of different options there that help kind of create these extremely secure passwords and you really only have to remember how to log in and have one really secure password to access that and then otherwise this stores your passwords and engages um, all your other softwares so that I think is huge 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 and, and something that I would highly recommend and then really to rip off of the point of um, what you were talking about in terms of user access I think that that's huge and especially in my work at Method has been something I've worked out a lot where I've been building out custom permission solutions for people. Um, and so, you know, having, you know, only the people that need to access your QuickBooks, accessing your QuickBooks and otherwise, you know, providing some form of access elsewhere. So for example, with Method, we have this integration with QuickBooks where we can enable your sales team to still engage with and see QuickBooks data. But, you know, if they're not all bookkeepers or accountants, they don't necessarily need to be in your QuickBooks for, you know, <laughs> data integrity reasons. I think I agree with you in that, like, you know, you don't want to store particularly sensitive data in QuickBooks, um, but you still want that data to be accurate and, and um, uh, you know, up to date in the correct way. And you don't want that to get messed around with. So yeah, just really, really um, agreeing with you on, on having the right people in QuickBooks and only seeing the data that they need to see in QuickBooks. And otherwise, you know, enabling people that need QuickBooks data with software that integrate with QuickBooks because QuickBooks has so many um, great integrations. Agreed. Yeah, and we've got a question actually from Virginia that I think might make sense to tackle now. Um, mm -hmm. So for their clients, um, uh, bank credentials, um, they're storing them inside the notes section. I believe of QuickBooks Online, and they're wondering, it helps them work remotely, um, but they're wondering if this is a bad idea in terms of data security. Kelly, 
So I just started to answer. I think I did start to answer. Um, so I I remember a couple of years back, actually. So I remember maybe I feel like it was eight or nine years ago. There was a big movement where um, they changed the law, and you were no able you were no longer allowed to store just something as simple as a credit card number inside of like a QuickBooks file or inside of your even just in your own environment on your server, et cetera. Right? You had to start using an outside processor to store those kinds of things for security reasons, and I kind of apply that rule to all things bank, credit card, et cetera. Uh, so when it comes to like bank account numbers, banking logins, all that kind of stuff, it's either in Lithio because they have a section for that, or I'll do something, um, typically it's actually in 1Password, right? So I use 1Password for all my passwords, but you can also create notes in there that you can give access to your team. Um, you can also use it for sharing passwords and logins. So I can assign a login to someone else so that they can then use it without having to do, let's say, copy and paste or having to know the actual login, which I also prefer. Uh, so I don't use a system kind of like what it's not designed for, right? So I don't use a system that's not designed to keep those things safe um, if it's not meant for that. So that's just my general rule of thumb. Uh, and then, like I said, so Lithio, one password, LastPass, all of these will give you options for storing passwords and then sharing them. The other thing is you can revoke access to those things. So you can then just remove that from their access and then they can't continue to get in, let's say later on. Because as you, let's say, you know, hire on different staff or let people go or people leave, you're having to either, I mean, in theory, you should be having the client constantly change that password if it's their login, because you don't want someone else to have it. The other thing is in doing it inside the notes, they can copy and paste, they can save it somewhere, they have access to the actual password, that kind of thing. So I just tend to not go that route because it scares me. Totally, that makes sense. Um, and I know Larry actually wrote in an interesting comment around, you know, any clients or businesses that are hesitant about the cloud from a security perspective. Um, Camille Kelly, any thoughts on that one just for the general audience? Yeah, I think it's it's, yeah, it's funny because um, it, I think it goes even past just like clients that I've worked with, but even friends I know are a little bit hesitant about how secure the cloud is. And we have seen leaks from the cloud previously. Um, but at the end of the day, I do think that, you know, particularly QuickBooks, like they're the security that they have is at a level that, you know, if you're not afraid of, you know, using online banking, which at this rate, most things are involved with online banking, you're going to be safe with QuickBooks. Um, but again, there's also some onus on you to make sure that you're keeping yourself safe safe in the way that you're engaging with your passwords and who you're giving them to and who you're giving access to. But the software itself is sound. Um, yeah, that's, that's my take on that. Um, yeah, I would say same. <laughs> I have to say the same thing. Uh, so as far as um, moving to the cloud, I tend to remind them of that bank access. Like if you're already using online banking, they, you know, they have your information. So like, I look at it, my aunt always says this, like, I'm not sure who it is that you're worried about hiding from, but likely if you're signed up for your bank online and you've saved your card in Amazon and you have your, you know, your file, your information on file with something like uh, walmart.com or something, you know, like your, your information is out there. Uh, so, and also you can easily Google and get the same information. Uh, I always found it kind of funny, and I guess it's a generational thing. Like I grew up using the internet for a lot of things, right? So it comes natural to me. I sign up for online banking. I sign up for apps. I'm ready to go. Like let's try all the things. Um, not to say that I haven't had fraud committed against me. I've definitely had false purchases on my card, and those things happen. Um, but I feel like our information's already out there. <laughs> like they kind of already have it, you know. So yeah. it's just a matter of how you can protect it. I also think it's always funny to me when somebody's like, no, I want to mail a check. I'm like, do you want to take the check that has your routing number and your account number on it and put it inside of an envelope, this piece of paper and mail it across the country? <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> but you could have somebody very easily ask you to send a link, put in your ACH or your credit card and make that payment. Online. And it's a direct contact, right? Like that's, it's not, it's not going through all the thousands of hands and it'll go through in the mailing system. Right, yeah, yeah. it's going to leave from here. We're going to put a stamp on it. It's going to go to the post office. Who knows how many people are going to touch it before it gets to the client, 
right? And then, God forbid, on the other side, you have someone that opens that envelope that then decides to take that information and do what they will with it. I always find that very funny where I'm like, I feel like that's a much more trusting situation than somebody sending me a secure link and making a payment. Also, when you're paying online, if you're using even your debit card, your credit card, there's some kind of fraud protection in there where if it's used incorrectly, you can go back to the bank and say, hey, this wasn't me. And they're happy to investigate on your behalf. You can't really do that with a check. Yeah. I think even going past that to like quell the, the nerves of someone who's, you know, very hesitant about the cloud and stuff like that. Like if you really think about the interaction that we just had for you to engage with me, like you used your iPhone, which knows you know, probably exactly where you are. You've put your name in there. You've used that to like Google me with your Google account that also has all of your emails. And then you've contacted me through, you know, email or something like at this rate, like the amount of information that's accessible or available on the internet is already there and is already being, you know, engaged with in a secure way that to, to move to a, an online solution for your accounting, I, I don't think that you're giving up anything particularly new or crazy, um, yeah. Definitely. I think kind of the takeaway there is that, you know, the cloud is not something to shy away from and really education and knowing where your data is and how it's protected is kind of the key to being successful here and ensuring, you know, just minimizing your risk uh, when it comes to oh. cyber. Yeah, I, I like did want to ask something about this slide. So I know that I slipped in. So tools like ShareFile, I said Smart Vault earlier, LastPass, 1Password, Lithio. Um, I did throw Bookkeep in there because I have a lot of uh, e-commerce clients. So for anyone that has clients where you have to log into the back end of, let's say, Amazon or Shopify, something along those lines, uh, Bookkeep has a nice feature where you can invite the client to log in and they're not having to give you actual password access, et cetera. Uh, so I tried to put apps in here that focus on security and focus on making the client more comfortable. So what they get is an invite from me that says, hey, please log in to Amazon via Bookkeep so that I can get your you know, historical data so that I can you know, start integrating it into QuickBooks. Um, so I always try to focus on apps that are gonna make the client feel a little bit better. And so that's why I mentioned that one, just so everyone's like, what is this? It's so different, but it's there for that reason. <laughs> I love that, thanks for clarifying. Uh, we're just gonna uh, follow up with one more question before we move on to our next uh, question for the panelists. Um, so this one's from Douglas. And uh, they kind of wrote in saying that Camille was talking about integrating with other apps um, so that your sales team doesn't have access to all of your QuickBooks data. Um, and Douglas was wondering, um, you know, what tool you're using to do that uh, because they hate uh, that when their sales team logs into um, QuickBooks, they see the whole kind of picture of the fi like financial state of the company uh, versus just the information that they need to see. Uh, so Camille, do you want to take it away with that one? Absolutely. So funny enough, it's Method. Um, method um, has a, an incredibly seamless integration with QuickBooks, where essentially at the end of the day, you can have specifically dictate what apps your sales reps have access to. Um, and even within that, what um, data they have access to. So in Method, you would set up that, you know, you could see all invoices, for example, but maybe you only want people to see the invoices that they're assigned to. And so really that's where um, that integration comes in so handy is they are directly seeing the invoices that maybe, you know, you have a bookkeeper that creates all your invoices in um, QuickBooks, but you want your sales team when reaching out to people to be able to see that data. Um, in that case, you would give them access to invoices and method, only invoices that they're assigned to, and they're able to go to their client, view the invoices that for that specific client, and still engage with that person based on the sales that they need to discuss um, without having, yeah, that kind of state of the company view that um, you kind of get when you have access to QuickBooks, because it is really an accounting software. It's not meant to like empower salespeople necessarily. Um, yeah. For sure and douglas we do offer a free trial if you did want to give us a go no credit card or contract like or anything like that required so feel free um great okay moving on to our next question and i think what a lot of people are here for um what kind of new features are there in quickbooks online for 2022 that are exciting and both of you guys recommend kind of the audience to take advantage of uh camille do you want to start us off for this one yeah, absolutely. So um, I would say that the ones that I'm a little bit more excited about, again, I'm kind of the, I guess, tech nerd in the in the chat today. Um, but for me, it's kind of some of the automation. So they've um, really implemented some cool automation around overtime. And so um, there they've, they've 
identify it, it'll help you kind of identify potential incorrect overtime entries um, and so it provides you know employers with greater assurance that the hours worked um, and logged by employees are actually accurately being organized um, and then also limits you know um, and, and meets like kind of your federal or state limits um, and then another really cool kind of automation feature that they have or something like automation detection that you you guys can kind of engage with um, is some tax penalty protection so um, if you're receiving federal state or local taxes um, or tax penalties rather um, if there's an error QuickBooks um, and you're using QuickBooks online payroll elite um, they'll actually assist in resolving those issues as well as help reimburse any of those penalty and interest costs um, so that's really cool and then finally one that I see a lot um, on my end is importing data. And so I think a lot of people import data from Google Sheets. And so they recently have um, brought in a really cool um, tool to be able to import in the same way from, or sorry, you've previously been able to um, import from Excel and they've recently brought in some features to be able to import from Google Sheets. And I know that kind of at the end of the day, you're really working with a lot of data sometimes. Um, even with small and medium sized businesses, just lots of sales, lots of leads, lots of customers, all that kind of stuff. And so having this like really easy access funnel from Google Sheets, which is a collaborative tool already, um, I think is huge. So yeah. Definitely, that was a great recap. Uh, Kelly, anything to add there? Um, I would say as far as new stuff, so I tend to, my, my, my universe, my center is QuickBooks, right? So tech nerd, like you mentioned, uh, so I'm looking always for new apps that are going to do, let's say, some of the things that QuickBooks doesn't do. Um, but I will also say that I've started to see this trend where if something is needed or really popular, QuickBooks has kind of started to roll it in, right? So like the um, collaboration on transactions. So I need more information from my client about a transaction that came through from the bank. I can now just ask them inside of QuickBooks and like push that out. Um, another thing, like you'd mentioned with Google Sheets, uh, so there's an app called G-Acon, G-A-C-C-O-N, and it lets you actually connect Google Sheets to other levels of QuickBooks. So if you don't have QuickBooks Online, online Advanced, you can use it for Plus or, um, oh my gosh, I'm forgetting the other level down, Essentials. I'm like, <laughs> uh, so stuff like that is what I, what I tend to focus around. Um, I mean, QuickBooks is growing like insanely fast, right? So I, Intuit is growing QuickBooks specifically. So they now have like a checking account. They now have uh, QuickBooks Capital where they'll give you a loan. They have so many more things that are going on and so many more products that are coming out. Um, I will say their payroll is moving towards a very big improvement. And I know you had mentioned payroll, so they're now offering a lot more, I would say security or backup where they have your back in a more, <laughs> a more secure kind of way. Um, so it's made a lot of improvements, but I'm always kind of on the look for new apps more so. Uh, and then my clients, depending on their level of engagement, mostly they're not inside of QuickBooks. So I'm always looking for the features that are more going to be helpful for me. Uh, cause I'm then presenting them with, you know, with different reports and stuff that I've already pulled out. Uh, but that interaction I would say is one of the biggest ones. The collaboration on transactions is major, like such a game changer. Really makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Kelly. That's great. Super robust uh, responses from both of you. So hope the people on the call find that helpful. I'm sure they will. Um, great. So beyond what's new in QuickBooks Online, I was wondering what are kind of your favorite, you know, core features that keep you coming back for more uh, in the tool? Kelly, do you want to start us off? Yeah. Um, sure. So I feel like at the most basic level, the bank feeds, right? So bank feeds have made major improvements. Um, and I know that over a couple of years there, it was because banks were changing their security and things were disconnecting and there was a whole bunch of back and forth. Um, and I have to say on both sides, both Intuit, QuickBooks and the banks have kind of figured it out for the most part, thankfully. Uh, we have a lot less um, you know, disconnecting and trying to figure out where to catch up from, et cetera. So bank fees are major. Um, I'm still a huge fan of reconciliations. I know that that sounds silly, but there are products out there accounting GLs that don't let you reconcile and that makes me so nervous. Uh, so I'm always a fan to make sure that we've captured everything, make sure everything is nice and clean, we've finished everything out. Um, custom reporting, I know like, I mean this sounds really silly to me and most of it is core stuff, but like I can create custom reports for my clients and have them auto email to them. 
Uh, I had a client that was interested to see every Monday morning before he started work, he wanted to know who owed the company money, right? So if he was going to speak to a client, he had in the back of his mind that they were either past due or maybe this, we shouldn't sell them something. Um, and so we had a collections report go to him every Monday morning. Just stuff like that. That's always been, you know, I guess simple stuff, but always a big fan, I would say. Um, and then obviously, the, the ability to connect outside is always major. Uh, so I, apps.com is like my go-to for whenever I have an issue of some sort that I cannot fix or cannot um, you know do within QuickBooks. I'm always looking for something that connects and they have, what I will say is really nice, they have levels of security before an app can actually be added to apps.com. And so you know that when you're connecting, you're not having to worry that you're connecting something that might potentially, let's say, screw up your books or bring in information that you didn't want. Um, but as with any app, it's all about the setup. So just making sure you're pulling in the correct information, that you've lined it up correctly, you've mapped it correctly, et cetera. Um, but they have this great website that tells you, you know, where you can find all the stuff if they don't do it for you. Yeah, I would say, honestly, the, the one thing that keeps me like so, so, so engaged with QuickBooks, I think, is is that integration aspect. I think it's so huge to be able to, and, you know, it ties into points earlier where you only, like, QuickBooks is an accounting software, and I think they, they're very good at recognizing, like, we do accounting, and, and there are lots of things within accounting, but there are things that people need to do to engage with their accounting um, and data that, maybe we don't need to necessarily focus on like or or is just not necessarily what we can provide and so having that apps.com is in, is incredible um, and i can speak to the security for sure we actually at method just went through our intuit audit and they are definitely thorough um in going through um and go. auditing this, the, the technologies that integrate with them and so we spent a lot of time on that um and i i think it's incredible in creating custom solutions for clients, a lot of the time um, I've had to engage with those integrations to QuickBooks. So, you know, at the end of the day, when you're working with your inventory, maybe QuickBooks is not necessarily the, the only place that, or you have a very complex inventory solution, in which case maybe someone you're, is going to use SOS inventory, or you have a really complicated tax solution, you're going to use Avitax, um, and those in integrate directly with QuickBooks, right? And I think that that's so, so, so awesome. Um, and then obviously on methods end as well, being able to kind of reap the benefits of those integrations with QuickBooks is creates such an incredible ecosystem of technology that's super simple to use. It's all really centralized because it all comes into one place and then disperses itself into those additional areas um, in a really clear and concise way. I like truly cannot like praise the integrations enough. I think it's so cool and just like puts so much power in um, small businesses' hands to be able to like do what they need to do in the way that they need to do it. Totally, I definitely saw your eyes uh, lighting up there, Camille, when you were on the integration piece. I love it. <laughs> I love an integration. That's great. Um, so kind of on that note, this is actually a perfect segue for our third poll. Um, so yeah, thanks again to everyone who voted. Um, so yeah, we're going to move on uh, to our final question, actually, for our panelists before we move into a little surprise, a sneak peek at no-code um, solutions, as well as our formal Q&A. Um, so Kelly, Camille, what are kind of the latest QuickBooks Online best practices uh, that you would recommend taking advantage of? Um, okay, so I was saying, First and foremost, you have to maintain it like always, right? So <laughs> maintaining it often. So I find that the clients who, you know, get back to me right away, the way we're getting information, we're getting documents, et cetera, and we're kind of constantly able to get in there, keep everything up to date. Um, I try not to let anyone go more than two weeks out for, you know, adding stuff from the bank feed, entering, let's say, bills, documents, whatever it might be. Uh, so we're in our client files at the very least every two weeks, but likely on a more weekly to daily basis. Uh, so going in, clearing out your bank feeds, uh, asking questions of your clients so that you're asking them a couple of questions, not a long list at the end of the month where they don't remember what they did you know, last week, never mind 30 days ago. Um, so best practices, definitely keeping it maintained would be the biggest one. Um, making sure that anything that you've connected is still connected, you know, just kind of doing a sweep. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, any time that you have hired somebody or let somebody go, making sure that their access is updated, you know, passwords are changed, whatever that might look like. Uh, because also keep in mind that if you have someone that comes in to your firm as an accountant, they may already have a QuickBooks Online accountant set up, or they may already have QuickBooks Online access. 
and that won't be revoked until you revoke it for that particular client, whatever it might be. So making sure that that's all maintained. Um, so I feel like this is really boring stuff, but mostly maintenance, <laughs> maintenance and, you know, maintaining often, it's like the best advice that I can definitely give, um, making sure that everything's working kind of well, well oiled machine, if you will. Yeah, I basically agree wholeheartedly in, in terms of just keeping your QuickBooks file clean. Like that's kind of, especially, you know, when I end up going to conferences on behalf of Method and I'm speaking with these bookkeepers um, and, you know, we're, we're discussing like what the benefits are of Method. At the end of the day, it's keeping that QuickBooks file clean, keeping non-accounting data out of your accounting software. Um, I know it's, it's tough, especially I think sometimes people are looking at the cost of things um, and, you know, having a difficult time with thinking about the, the cost of additional integrations, but I think the cost of having um, a kind of clogged up or, or, you know, messy QuickBooks file honestly ends up really costing you more down the line where you're really trying to get that all cleaned up and maintained um, in the future. So it's it's cool to hear those um, timelines that you're talking about, Kelly, where you're speaking about like, you know, not really going out further than two weeks and stuff like that. I think those kind of best practices are awesome because um, yeah, I, I really do think that as you go through it and you realize, you know, this doesn't need to be here, this does need to be here, you set yourself up for the best um, success in the future. So um, yeah, I would say really just keeping that clean file um, and and uh, keeping information that doesn't need to be in there out of there just to make sure that you're using it to its best. Uh, to its best. I, one more thing too, um, checking with your clients, right? So like, I hate when someone says, like at the end of the month, like, wait, where did this transfer go? Or, oh, this is weird. This says Chase on it, but we don't have a Chase bank account. And having to go back to the client and say like, hey, did you start a new bank account or a credit card that you may not have mentioned? Or did you take a loan that you didn't tell us about? Um, so in addition to obviously maintaining QuickBooks, if you're doing it more often, you're able to catch those things faster. But I understand that we're all busy and that's not always the case. Uh, but sometimes just checking in with our clients and saying, hey, um, you know, did you, did you do anything this month that I should know about? You know, like some people don't realize that stuff like loans will affect their books or um, a new credit card or a new bank account where you're essentially holding money possibly. Uh, all of those things are important. Um, PayPal is kind of uh, famous for that in that you can store money in there, but they look at it more like they're using it as a tool to pay bills or to accept payments. And so they don't realize that it's holding money like a bank account. Uh, so stuff like that, just kind of checking in, even if it's once a month of saying, anything happened that I need to know? Uh, <laughs> just kind of yeah. let me know. <laughs> that kind of yeah. stuff really helps. Yeah. Uh, the rule of thumb there is definitely, uh, if you're going to be honest with anyone, it is your accountant. Um, <laughs> um, that can be our takeaway. <laughs> we know more it. than you think we know. <laughs> you will get caught. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome um and yeah sorry we are moving to just our final question now then we'll open up the floor for formal q a um so kind of the last one we have for kelly and camille today is how do you overcome you know the growing pains a lot of businesses face as they're growing and scaling themselves uh with using quickbooks online how do you kind of you know jump over those limitations and keep using a solution that you do really like um camille do you want to start us off with that one yeah, I think, again, it's a lot of what we've been talking about today. I think having those um, really kind of well set permissions to make sure that, you know, people are engaging with the correct data, um, working with people like Kelly, who are, are QuickBooks experts and making sure that they, <laughs> they've got you all um, set up, I think. Um, those are those are things that will set you up for success in the in the long run. And then also again finding those great integrations that are going to work for you. Um, finding uh, finding third parties that actually integrate with QuickBooks. I think a lot of people will say they integrate with QuickBooks. And so there is a little bit of research um, as well to be done, but finding things that actually are, and using apps.com as a resource, because like Kelly was saying, like that, that's a really secure place where we already know that this QuickBooks integration has been audited by QuickBooks themselves. Um, I think those are things that'll really, really set you up and kind of getting that, set at the ground layer makes it a little bit easier. I've worked with a lot of clients who, you know, got really far into things and then started to experience growing pains and then started looking for those integrations. And it was definitely a little bit more of a challenge to get them really set up because we had to really, you know, 
reset or, or do a lot of change management and process. And so, you know, trying to get that process out of the gate, understanding your business and understanding where those integrations can come in to get you going, um, I think are going to be ways to kind of massage your way past those growing pains. Yeah. Um, I would say, so depending on the level of QuickBooks that you're using, that's going to be a big one. Um, but then also a lot of times, so e-commerce clients are a really good example, right? So e-commerce clients, I have clients that can make hundreds of sales in a day. Um, so I'm always looking for whatever is coming into QuickBooks to be somewhat minimized. And I know that may sound silly, but I just want the numbers inside of QuickBooks, right? So the, the client name, where it's shipped to, I don't really actually want that information in my book the the extra information i really just want how much they paid what the fees were what the taxes were and then what the final deposit is going to be and so a lot of times when it comes to growing pains and locate inventory i know they're not a thing anymore but they were also very good at this was keeping all of the stuff outside and only keeping the financial data inside of quickbooks so when it comes to a client that's growing regardless of what industry it's in you're likely going to be able to find something to help maintain that so if it's like a service client, if it's a service-based client, using something like a CRM, so like method is a good example, to keep that data outside and only keeping what comes through as an actual sale inside of QuickBooks. E-commerce, something like Bookkeep to connect all the things, but really the bigger stuff like running um, reports on where's your concentration of sales or which state am I doing the most business in, run that in the sales platform. That shouldn't be stuff that's coming into QuickBooks. Um, so it depends on how you're trying to use it. I think that's more important than anything else. But my suggestion is usually not to use it for stuff it's not meant to be, right? So a lot of people try to make QuickBooks into something like a CRM. They try to make it into, you know, either managing clients or storing data or whatever it might be. And it's really not meant for that. Um, it's, it's a GL, right? It's, a, it's an accounting software. Use it for accounting and use the other stuff to keep the, the mess if you will <laughs> out of it uh so that's always always a big one i think that unless you have something where you need an erp you need enterprise level uh software to maintain let's say a whole company situation quickbooks is meant for accounting so i try to always make sure that that's what's going into it everything else is maintained somewhere else and that kind of helps with the the crowdedness if you will and the the growing pains <laughs> that you might be feeling and I think one kind of cool thing is that like QuickBooks is also integrating with some no-code um, platforms. So Method is a, is a no-code platform and there are lots of them. And so to kind of quickly maybe touch on what no-code is in case um, people aren't super familiar, um, essentially it's just the ability to create apps or create, um, you know, custom workflows for yourself without actually having to do any programming. So most systems will create like a drag and drop interface where you can just kind of drag something onto the screen and then engage with it. And so taking advantage of that is a great way to be able to get to that nitty gritty exactly what our business needs and needs to know um, outside of QuickBooks where exactly like Kelly was saying, and it's, it's always a funny conversation when sometimes I'm working with um, clients in, in Method and you know, We'll, we'll discuss a workflow and they're like, okay, but we need to see that in QuickBooks. And I'm like, okay, why? Like, you know, you and you sit there and you ask them, but why? Like, it's an accounting software. And at the end of the day, if, you know, th this information, this person's, you know, specific drop location is not necessarily going to be something that your accountant um, needs to right. know or engage with for the most part. Obviously, you know, maybe there are these certain instances where the accountant is doing some, some form of um, engagement with that information. And for sure, you want to try and make sure that what it, <laughs> if it's there, if it needs to be there, it needs to be there. Um, but really asking yourself why do we need this in QuickBooks and can I build something myself where that's where I think no code platforms are awesome is it empowers you as a small business particularly to be able to build out your solution for you I think that's what's really cool with, with those no code solutions yeah I agree um I think it I, I have to agree with you I agree so hard like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so the other thing is like, and I, I love QuickBooks. I like to preach well. I love QuickBooks, right? And I'm like, totally book loves QuickBooks, right? And I'm sure it says it. But there, it's built for certain things, and there aren't reports that you can pull for that data. So for me, putting them into QuickBooks doesn't make sense, right? Like the dropship yeah. stuff, the all that. It's just not meant for that. And 
I think part of it, and they're moving towards it. I will say that they're moving towards a whole business, you know, management platform type of thing, but right now it's not fully there. And so I think that maintaining data outside of it makes the most sense. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Totally. And on the note of no code, I know not everyone's super familiar with it. Camille gave it a great definition, um, but we are going to show you um, guys that kind of a peek at what a no code solution can look like in just a, just a few seconds. Um, but before we do, I did just want to launch our final poll for those of you looking for the CPE credit. And it's actually on how much you know about no code. All right. And then we're going to close the poll. And it looks like a lot of you guys are fairly new to no code, which is no problem at all. It's great that you joined the webinar, obviously. And uh, then I'm actually going to pass it over to Camille to just kind of show you um, what no code can look like and what it can do uh, for your organization. Uh, awesome. so, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm just going to change the presenter over to myself. Perfect. Oh, awesome. And oh. I want this screen. There we go. <laughs> Can you guys see that okay? <laughs> Looks great. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, so this is method itself. And so in method, we have a few different apps that you can work with here. One that you can work with in particular is the invoicing app. And so I've got a couple invoices in here. You'll see, you know, I can create a new invoice for, um, you know, my customer Allen test. Um, and so looking at this invoice, I want to start adding items. And when I go to add some items, I see here that I've got some test items in here. Um, and so this has synced over from my QuickBooks. Maybe I was working with some stuff um, previously, but as you know, you know, method is meant to empower your salespeople to be able to engage with QuickBooks data. But you know, in this case, I maybe don't necessarily want them to be um, working with or trying to sell test items for, <laughs> um, because those were just something that I was kind of messing around with earlier. So um, in method, what I can do is I can hit customize screen, and this is actually going to take us into our screen designer. And so this is what a no-code platform, or at least our no-code platform looks like, um, but it should be familiar for those of you that work with no-code platforms. You'll see some items that we can drag and drop onto the screen. So when I go to edit it here, I'll create a copy of the screen just so I don't, um, I can revert back to an older version and so i can grab you know items and drag and drop a button onto the screen i can drag and drop um you know text fields in this case uh, i want to look at that item list right so i'm going to actually scroll down um in, on the screen and i'm going to find that invoice line item um, and i'm going to actually edit that grid so when i go to edit the grid i get the option to edit the columns and when i go to edit the columns i see the item column so in that item column I've got some selection criteria. This is what actually filters those items. So right now, the only two filters that are there are the ability to filter it by active items. So I only want to see my active items and I only want to see items um, that are uh, not a category. Um, what I want to include here is that I don't want to see items where the, the name, so in this case, full name, does not contain. And so what's great with no-code platforms is it's like, you know, relatively plain English here. I'm saying I don't want the full name. I want the full name to does not contain the word test. And so I'll just write out the word test and that's all I need to do. So now if I close out of this here and I head back to my invoice, when I go to add an item to my um, invoice now and I look at this dropdown, I don't see any test items. I only see the items that do not have the word test in them. So um, that's really how simple no code can be. And I think that you know, the solutions that you can do with this kind of go all over the place, right? So if there are things like you want your sales reps to have a template of an invoice every time they come in, um, you know, we can, you can create that functionality where they come in and every time these few items exist or um, you know we want to have an additional address field and you can add those for yourselves on here um, by just creating some custom fields and adding those to the screen so no code like I was saying really puts the power into your hands to create the solution for you um, and that's what I think is really cool about it yeah thanks so much Thanks, Camille. That was awesome. I hope that kind of opened everyone on the call's eyes um, to what's possible with no code. Um, so yeah, we are going to move on to our final Q&A session. So again, if you have any questions, we've been getting tons, which is super exciting. And I know Kelly's been firing away on the chat trying to get to as many as them as possible, which is great. Um, but yeah, if you have any lingering questions, um, our QuickBooks experts here can potentially help you out with, uh, feel free to send them our way. Um, do, 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 do. I know I've been putting like short answers in, but actually, so the last one I think you guys can speak a little bit better to. Um, you have a nonprofit version of method, 
um, for nonprofits to use, not like enough, well, whatever. You have a nonprofit version. Uh, do you guys want to speak a little bit to that? So um, Howard had said, you know, with nonprofit clients, QuickBooks isn't really great about um, having a formula for just getting the giving statements uh, to be individually granted. So they have to present at the end of the year, typically a full amount given by one individual or organization. Um, so my answer was that you guys have a CRM for nonprofits that they can use to then track the giving by the individual. And I'm assuming I'm correct in that. Um, and then I would say there's some type of report that they can generate if everything goes through the CRM before it goes to QuickBooks. Is that right? Do you work at Method? <laughs> How do you know all that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did have a nonprofit in a former lifetime a couple of years ago where we did implement it. So I'm somewhat familiar, but I don't work with nonprofits anymore. So you guys can probably give more detail. Yeah, so exactly like Kelly said, we do have Method Donor, which is exactly that solution where you'll be able to engage with um, your donations. And then we have a plethora of reporting that comes from that, that you can both send to your clients and for your internal reporting. Um, and so there's great things there. There's places to include, um, I forget what the exact name of the code is, but I know that there's like a specific like nonprofit code and stuff like that. We've taken that into consideration as well to ensure that that appears on your reports correctly um, and for those people as they're filing their taxes and stuff like that. So definitely worth checking out. Thanks. Okay. Um, and then also, I just wanted to elaborate on one of the other ones that came through. Uh, someone was saying that as a bookkeeper, she or he, I can't find the question, uh, they're spending a lot of time on um, dealing with apps that clients maybe have already come with. Uh, so I had said in the chat, but for me, it's if we have a solution for it already in place that we're using in our practice, then we're going to move them over. So if someone comes to me and they're using Shopify and they've you know, used the, the $10 connector app that they've been using to kind of get information in, but it's not great, I'm gonna say, hey, we're gonna move you over to our app that we use and discontinue use of that one. Uh, if they come to me with a solution that we, you know, with an app that we don't actually have a replacement for, I build some extra time into the engagement so that I know um, I've kind of covered my butt on learning the app, right? So I'm gonna spend some extra time on learning this app for your industry or your specific niche or whatever it might be that we're working on you with. Um, and I'm gonna cover that in whatever my pricing is to you so that we're, we're able to learn it. And then also we might now be able to offer it to other clients, but really the basis is that if we're using it for one client, we need to learn it. It's gonna be something that we're gonna learn with them um, just to kind of make it easier all around, but then also, like I said, I'm trying to cover my time and my my fees because it does take time to learn these things. Yeah, I think that really the change management aspect of things can definitely be really difficult for people and having had to go through a lot of change management with um, people in the past. I've definitely seen kind of where those that friction can come in and, you know, especially when you're dealing with a team of people that are super familiar with something, um, it, it can be really difficult. And so I think really, you know what I mean, it, it's um, a matter of being really, of really understanding the solutions that you can provide. So if you have um, a point solution that, like Kelly was saying, is a replacement for something that your clients are using, making sure that you have such a good grasp on it that you can really answer any of those questions and make sure that that change management is smooth for their team because I think where it becomes really difficult is when you know they change over or to new software and you just don't have the answers and they really can't like it you know all these things that they're used to being able to do are totally missing um I think it it's one thing to be like this is a new process and it's a different thing to be like that information is no longer available to you. I think that that can be very difficult. Um, and so just being able to make sure to, you know, maybe even proceed with like, what are the most important things that your teams are already using and where making sure that you can already engage with them on those um, points. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, guys, for all those insightful tips and answers. We are right at the two o'clock mark. Uh, so we're going to have to wrap up, but really appreciate uh, appreciate it, Sarah, having such an engaged audience. And uh, shout out to both Camille and Kelly for all of the awesome advice they provided today. We can't say thank you enough. Yeah, so yeah. until next time, guys, thanks so much. Have a good day. Uh, have a great day, guys. Bye. Thank you.